Yeah, it's been brought to you by One Football, the app that gives you football news all over the world from 160 different leagues in 16 different languages. And this is the One Football app. As you can see, our teams are up here at the top. It's in the play in Crystal Palace. You've got news. So the latest news regarding football, anything to do with football, transfer talk, and of course, there's videos from around the world. So guys, make sure you go down to the description below and make sure you download the app. What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and Everton have just beaten Burnley 1-0 at Goodison Park. A result that, that puts us, I think it's 13th, um, a result that was thoroughly deserved. We were the better team for the majority, if not all, of the game. We had numerous opportunities, starting in the six-minute Mason Holgate, having an opportunity that he should score from. Dominic Calvert-Lewin had numerous headers, one putting over the bar, a couple straight at the goalkeeper. And just time and time again, Everton just looked like they could hurt Burnley. The area that we've really struggled with is... Dominic Calvert-Lewin did have three or four, maybe five opportunities today. And he scores the hardest one. You know, he scores one where the ball's whipped in from Sadibi. It's low and he gets his head on it, which was a, it was a great finish, good finish. But it shouldn't be that difficult. It really shouldn't. He shouldn't make it that difficult. But all in all, it was a good game. And, and Everton were creative, they were strong, Richarlison didn't have a great game, but he was still a threat, Bernard I thought had a really good game, really impressed with Bernard today, um, he was a constant threat, left foot, right foot, he was able to cut inside, cut inside, go outside, he, he just ripped Burnley a new arsehole, um, Luca Dean is crossing, it was slightly better this week, um, I don't feel like he's in a, a good run of form to be brutally honest, um, but look, Burnley offered very little, um, they had one opportunity and it was always from set pieces and it was a header um, they had one early on they had one when uh, Rodriguez puts it wide and he had another one where the corners comes in and Pickford makes a, a, a good catch basically but it was a catch um, there was one moment where Pickford looked shaky he decides to run to the edge of his box and try and keep the ball in his box but as a result gives away a free kick for the ball going out now I've seen it and I think he keeps stays in the box, but who fucking knows? Um, in terms of Everton's play overall, as I say, it was snappy. Delph and Sigurdsson in the middle were able to, to move the ball around um, quite quickly, quite tightly. Don't get me wrong, at times, the defensive ability um, could be questioned. But Sigurdsson did a very decent role. As a, as a centre midfielder because, you know, he can carry the ball. He can defend to a degree. And he's prepared to get a foot in and he uses his energy well. So maybe just as Sigurdsson is getting older, maybe he's coming backwards a little bit in terms of position. Um, but he was fine alongside Delft today. Um, player who stood out for me, and he seems to every week, is Gibriel Sadebe because... You know, it was his cross that gets the goal. But on top of that, he was just up and down, up and down. And as a right winger today, he caused constant problems. But actually, as well, he did his defensive duty as well. So I thought Coleman had a good game. I don't think anyone had a particularly bad game today. I was just disappointed that in the final third, we couldn't break down a Burnley side, which quite honestly, was shit. Um, Burnley were terrible. Um... You know, I mean, as a Burnley fan, I really would struggle watching that turgid shit every week. Um, really was bad, and, I, and I've got nothing against Burnley as a football team. I really don't. But fuck me, that was that was awful. Um, another thing as well, I'm just going to mention. Um, Moyes King comes on, good as some erupts. It was really good for him to see. And look, he got involved straight away, caused a few problems. Um, there was one moment where he lays off the ball, lovely little flick into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He goes wide and he waits to receive that ball, but DCL just doesn't see him, doesn't play the ball in. And and that, that probably fucks him a little bit. Um, yeah, there's not a massive amount to say, really. There really isn't. It was just a really good performance we've ground out a win Carlo Ancelotti's first game and it's really positive going forward um I thought that you know if we if we're going to play football like that we need to adapt and I, I personally would 
Richarlison, in my opinion, as a centre forward today, did struggle a little bit. Um, he really did. Um, and I do question whether his game is built for that. I actually question sometimes um, how good Richarlison actually is because he's great running with the ball, but he's he's got no skill to beat anyone. He can't beat people. Um, and he lets off these shots at times, which just aren't on. Um, there was two occasions today. He's running through the centre of the park. He's got Dominic Calvert-Lewin on his left. He's got Jibril Sadebi on his right. And he's shooting from 20 yards straight at the feet of the defender that's literally standing in front of him. That was poor. Um, but that's literally the only criticism of today. As I say, Burnley... Burnley are shit. I mean, they are shit. Um... Tchaikovsky at the back, he was decent, he had a decent game. That Phil Bardsley, he's an absolute twat, he? He's, he's an absolute, he puts one on Dina and, and Luca Dean towards the end of the game and I just looked at him and I just thought, mate, you are literally probably one of the shortest men on the pitch and think you're the hardest. It was just embarrassing. Um, I'm going to give my man of the match today to Gibriel Sadebe, but equally he could be followed by Gilfie Sigurdsson, Bernard, um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin needs to sort his fucking shooting out, as in terms of getting his head consistently in the game. Because at times, it just looks like the game, he's always prepared to get involved and he works hard. And I, and that's great, that is good. But when, you, when you're playing as a striker for Everton, you've got to have that, that, that bit of grit, that little bit of determination, that little bit of... Um, of rawness, what we used to see in Lukaku, you know, and I don't necessarily feel DCL's got that. I really don't, and I, you know, I'm not going to criticise the lad because he's had an okay game today. But I want to see more. I want to see some hunger. I want to see, I want to see some getting the ball down and running at people and really causing teams problems because he's quick. But he never tries to go in behind. He uses his stature for everything. And I actually think when he plays for England and when he dominated the Under Twenties World Cup. He was running in behind. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that for Everton. We pump the ball into him and he hits it on his chest. That's not what I want to see. I want to see him have the ball through into feet so he can run onto it and use his ex pace and exploit it. That's all, that's, that's all I ask. That's one thing that I would like to see changed. Um, I think Carlo Ancelotti will definitely be looking at the transfer window. I, in my mind, I can see us needing a centre midfielder, a striker and a centre back. Whether he goes for all three in January, I'd be surprised. But you never know. Maybe he could bring his, his good friend Koulibaly over. Maybe he could bring in Dres Mertens, who can play sort of anywhere along the three. And maybe, you know, he could, I don't know, maybe he could splash out some extra money on Decore or something. I don't know. But equally, it was a positive result today. Really, really happy with the win. And look, we move on. We've got Newcastle. Literally in two days' time, I think it is a game that Everton need to go there and need to win. You know, because we're not that far off the top six, top seven. There's no reason we can't make a late. Well, I'm not going to say late push. It's fucking. It's not even January yet, so we can show that ambition and that fight, and we can get there. So, guys, look, I'm leaving it there. Have a fantastic Boxing Day and uh, match preview for the Newcastle game will be out tomorrow. Peace.